Hello everyone, my name is Adam and welcome back to Pliplop. All right, get comfortable because we are back today with more stories of petty revenge. Before we do jump in, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. It takes one click and it really helps out. All right, let's get started. Oh, you want my parking spot? It was Christmas time and the mall parking lot was jammed. Somehow, I lucked into a space near an entrance, and four hours later, my friend Don and I staggered back to my car with full arms and very sore feet. But we'd be home in half an hour, so the end was in sight. We got the bag stowed and we buckled in, laughing ruefully about how exhausted we were. As I began backing out, a car was slowly pulling past right behind me. Naturally, I braked to wait for the car to clear my spot, but the driver saw my brake lights and realized she'd lucked out. All she had to do was back up and let me out and my primo spot would be hers. But it couldn't be that easy. Another car was tight on her tail, and that driver wanted my spot too. And neither of them was budging. The two drivers' faces got redder and redder as they honked, revved their engines to make the other driver think they were going to plow right into their car if it didn't move, and in general made utter asses of themselves over the parking spot. Meanwhile, my friend and I were trapped and getting pretty mad ourselves. After more than five minutes of this craziness, motor running but going nowhere, Don and I had had enough. We looked at each other and smiled. Then we got out of the car, locked it back up, and waved at the two disbelieving parking warriors as we headed back into the mall for a much needed drink and a bite to eat. That is how it's done. I once was putting stuff in my car and a guy was waving to show I had to rush, so I decided I needed lunch, put stuff in there, and went to lunch. There's a meme involving a driver sorting her things back before backing out of a parking spot, another driver honking at her, and the original driver settling in with her knitting. We'll see who dies first. That's basically what it turns into. Literally one of us needs to die. You wanna steal my dessert? How about a mouthful of ink to go with it? I was working at a fairly small meat packing plant with about 45 employees. The butchering was done in another part of the plant. We would clean, process, sort, and package the meat before shipping it out to different retailers around the area. We had a lunch slash break room where everyone would leave their lunch boxes while we were out working on the floor. For the most part, the break room was empty most of the day except during our 30 minute lunch or our two hour breaks that we were allotted each day. The door to the break room was basically situated behind all production lines, so the door was in sight while we worked, but nobody had a reason to keep an eye on it. As it turns out, people began to notice that their dessert would be missing out of their lunches. Someone would remember putting cookies in their lunch or stopping and buying a candy bar, and it would be gone by the time lunch or the last break would come around. Nobody really knew how long it had been going on until we all started talking. Even once we all figured it out, it was happening, it continued to happen with two or three people's lunches a day. We would try to watch the door to the break room, but there really wasn't a way to track people going in and out. We would jokingly accuse each other, but never could figure it out. Until one day, someone came up with a brilliant plan. Being how we worked in a meat packing plant, we used a edible ink that was used to stamp different grades of meat. We also had syringes for injecting different marinade or brines into different products. Four or five of us all brought Hostess Ding Dongs to work in our lunch boxes. If you don't know what a Ding Dong is, they are a dark brown chocolate cupcake with a cream center, perfect for extracting a little petty revenge. We used the syringe to suck out as much of the cream fill as possible through the packaging and injecting them full of the thick blue ink. It left a hole in the packaging about one eighth inch in size, but was otherwise unnoticeable. We then put them in our lunches and waited. It only took a few hours when suddenly the processing line erupted in laughter. Our plant manager, who was the only one in the building who wore a tie and a white dress shirt, came running out of the break room and towards his office. Not only was his lips and chin covered in the blue ink, but it had run down the front of his shirt and was even on his hands. He disappeared into his office and we didn't see him for the rest of the day. I'm not sure what the man had to bathe in, but the next day you could barely see it on his lips. And we were told by his secretary as he didn't show his face back on the production floor for several days. In any case, our desserts and candy stopped disappearing from our lunches and all was good in the world again. Again. And then one of the comments, nice, the thing that makes me mad about this is that it was management stealing from production workers who presumably make less money. Good embarrassing revenge that made it impossible for him to deny his guilt. I like it. Yeah, that's actually very true. Like, just buy your own ding-dongs. All right, let's see what we got here. Manchild X wouldn't pay for his own phone. About 10 years ago, I added my boyfriend at the time, we'll call him Tim, to my cell phone plan. He was 20 or 21 years old at the time living at home with mommy, we were in college, and had a decent part-time job. He did not have credit, so could not get his own standalone phone plan. He offered to pay his part of the bill, so I agreed and we got him all set up. 
We were together for about a year. He always acted like he was ashamed of me in public places, so we hardly ever went out. When we did hang out somewhere other than his mom's house, we were either at an event for him, a store for him to blow all his money on magic cards or wrestling figures, or at music and video shop where he would spend even more money on wrestling documentaries or albums by cover bands. This was a bi-weekly series of events. If I wanted to go to a particular store, no. If I had some event I would like him to go with me, no. He went to one concert with me because we were two hours from home and no one would see me. At his local wrestling events, if I was near him and someone came to talk to him, he would block me and never once introduced me. I was basically there to record his matches, but I was young and dumb and thought I couldn't do better because of a lifetime of brainwashing. Story for another time. Shortly before we broke up, I found out that he had been talking to another girl the first six months that we were together. She was his backup plan. I lost my shit when I found out about this. Things went downhill from there when he also admitted to hanging out at a girl's house to work on art projects without saying anything to me. I had enough and broke it off. Numerous times I told him he needed to get his own cell plan. He had stopped paying his part months before we broke up. He kept making excuses that he didn't have the money, see all the junk he had bought above. I finally got tired of his crap about two months after we had split. I called the service provider and asked to get his phone line removed from my account. About an hour later, he started messaging me on Facebook because his phone wasn't working. I played dumb and acted like mine wasn't working either. I told him I'd message the provider and find out what was going on. The next day, he messaged me again asking for an update. I told him the account had been suspended by accident when I tried to adjust my plan. I told him it would be at least another day before it was sorted out. He messaged me on Facebook again the next day and I told him that my plan got canceled and I had to open a completely new account without his on it. He got so mad and had to put down a $500 deposit to recover his phone number. I'm still proud of myself. See, I feel like at that point, you don't even need to make up an excuse about the cell provider. You can just say, we've been broken up for two months. But then again, young relationship, who knows? Let's see what the comments say. My ex cheated too, and I immediately called to kick him off my phone plan. I explained the situation to Sprint, and after they canceled me, they had the audacity to try to upsell me and get me to add a line. For who? Are you stupid? My ex was mad that I canceled his phone too, which ironically is how he got caught, me seeing him call some number that totaled 40 hours of talk time. If your ex all of a sudden was able to scrape up $500 to get a new phone, then he had it all along and could pay, but just didn't want to. Should have saved yourself the hassle and just blocked him on everything, lol. Yes. Very, very true. Sorry, mate, can't help. This happened a few years ago while my wife and I were on holiday in our motor home. We stopped at a campsite, chose a secluded pitch as far away from anybody else as possible. There was nobody within at least 300 meters of us. After setting up and putting the kettle on, we decided to have a spoke, not tobacco, wink, wink. While we were chilling, another motorhome arrived and for some reason decided to take the pitch right next door to ours, God knows why. The campsite was almost deserted. We were still smoking while they were setting up. An hour or so later, I got a phone call from the campsite owner saying there had been a complaint about the smell. It could only have come from our neighbor. I apologized profusely, and from then on, we didn't smoke in the van. Later that day, I had to change the gas bottle, which is at the back of a locker, which was on the side of our van facing them. It involves taking a load of stuff out to get to it. While I was doing this, I noticed I was being watched through the window by the owner of the next door van. One of the items I took out was a set of jump leads, which I dumped on the ground with other stuff. Having changed the gas bottle over, I put all the stuff back and shut the locker door. It so happened that Mady and us were leaving on the same day, so we're packing up at the same time. He was ready before us, but when he tried to start his van, the battery was flat. We were almost ready to go, and were already in the cab, seats ready to leave, when he came round to the driver's side and asked if he could borrow my jump leads. I looked him square in the eye and said, Sorry mate, haven't got any. Started the engine and drove away. Very small-minded and petty, I know, but gave me a great sense of satisfaction. Okay, I really like this one actually. And it just goes to show, don't be a tattletale. Let's see what the comments say. That guy was a dick and the best form of revenge is a battery served cold. This is the equivalent of an entire row full of urinals with OP at the end and then a drunk asshole starts shitting in one beside them. Parks right next to you when there's ample space elsewhere and complains about you smoking. WTF is this madness, I'm proud of you for not assisting them. My girlfriend and I were in a campground the size of a football field and the only ones there. We woke up surrounded by six tents full of Germans, like three feet away. We got up, had coffee, then pulled our stakes up and moved to the other side of the field. They came over and asked us if we didn't like them. 
Maybe some people just want seclusion, isolation when camping. That's kind of the point, right? Try to cut in line? I'll block your cart. So I went to Costco this evening. As we browsed plans, the lights dimmed. We'd not realized they closed early, 6 p.m., so we abandoned our browsing, Costco employees have lives too, and rushed to get the three things we really needed and got in line. The line for the quick check, it's like a self-checkout, but there are employees doing the scanning, was hella long, but that was our problem for rolling in so late. An older lady behind us turned out to be an employee off-duty, and she explained that folks with perishables were prioritized at the regular registers rather than the faster quick check lines. So we're waiting our turn like everyone else, the line's moving along with reasonable speed. We're about half a dozen back when a D7DE, a dude, I guess, with a full cart of perishables comes in from the side, clearly trying to merge in front of us. He was a younger dude, maybe 30, and we are woman on the back half of our 50s, so we kept moving forward, not allowing him to slide in. Note, he never looked at us or said anything. We were two back and it came, became clear that he was going to rush past us to the next checkout. Not on my watch. I zipped up and stood in front of him, the cart at my back. He tried to maneuver around, but I kept my ass planted about a foot in front of his cart and did not yield ground. Finally, he started saying, ma'am, can you move? And I said, you're trying to cut in front of all these people. Get back in line like everyone else. He did not. I was confident he wouldn't touch me with his cart. I mean, witnesses everywhere, and he's a big, younger dude hitting a short, older woman. Before long, it was our turn, so I had to move. As he rushed to the checkout, I said more loudly than necessary, you're cutting in line, you asshole. I spotted a freak checker and pointed him out and said he's cutting in line. The checker, my hero, immediately saw the looks everyone else was giving him and she directed him to the back of the line. A male employee stepped up and loudly announced that there was one line, which had been the case since these lanes opened. And the line formed back there as Cutter Dude made his way, his walk of shame to the end of the line. I thanked the checker while our three items were scanned. We headed out feeling powerful like we'd vanquished an evil monster. Ironically, if he'd had a real emergency and was in a legit rush, I'd have offered my place in line and gone to the back myself. I wasn't in any hurry, but no, he was a jerk with a raging sense of entitlement and he got what he deserved. Yeah, never will humanity band together more than when someone is cutting them in line. Full camaraderie and teamwork to try to exile the cutter. Let's see what the comments say. Here in New Jersey, we have to get our cars inspected. Years ago, the lines were terribly long. I was about 12 cars back, and as often happens, there are gaps in the line. That's when I noticed about three cars ahead. In that gap, a sporty car jumped in line. Outrage. Petty revenge? You decide. As that jumper approached the first position, I walked up to the technician and told her what had happened. She spoke with the driver of the car behind the jumper and verified the complaint. The driver of the car was waved on. His car was not inspected that day. As an Englishman, queuing is sacred to me and anyone who tries to mess with the system deserves to be shamed. Curious, have you ever gotten into a queue not knowing what it was for? I've heard the English love queuing so much that they will join one just because it's there. Can anyone confirm that? Is that true? That's funny. Anyway, I think we'll end it there. So thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like or just letting us know in the comment section down below. And as I said, if you're new here or haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. It really helps out. Thanks again for sticking around and we'll see you in the next one.